I've gotten this question a few times. How do I collect fees that I've earned on Uniswap V3 liquidity positions? I'm going to show you right now, and it's super easy. I've created a position here on the Uniswap V3 app on the Garely testnet. But because I've just created it, it could be days or longer, depending on the activity on this network, before I actually accrue some fees that I can collect. Because I don't want to wait several days for my position on Garely to accrue some fees that I can collect, I've started up a local hardhat network. I've deployed the Uniswap v3 contracts. I've deployed a pool and added a liquidity position. And then I've swapped back and forth on that swap pool to generate some fees that we can collect. Now, although we're going to write this to work with collecting fees on my local hardhat network, it will work almost exactly the same if you're trying to collect fees programmatically from Garely or Mainnet. And I'll point out the parts you'll need to change if you wanted to write this code for those networks. We'll be working mostly with Uniswap's non-fungible position manager contract. So I'm going to paste in the address where I have that deployed locally. And if you wanted to do this for a testnet, you would need to put the address of this contract where it's deployed on that testnet. Now I have two tokens deployed locally, a mocked version of Tether and a mocked version of USDC. I've modified each to use 18 decimal places just so the math is easy, but that doesn't really matter. And as I've mentioned, I have a Uniswap v3 swap pool deployed as well. I'm using the 500 tier fee and the two tokens in the swap are Tether and USDC. Here I've created an artifact object, which I'm pasting in because I just don't want to type this out. And it includes the artifacts for the contracts that we're going to be using, all four of these the non-fungible position manager, the Uniswap v3 pool, the USDT token, and the USDC token. So these two, these first two, they reference places in the Uniswap packages that I've installed. So you could actually find these if you went into node modules and then Uniswap, um, V3 periphery artifacts, contracts, interfaces, the I non fungible position manager. Um, that's the first one that we are requiring here. The second one is for the Uniswap V3 pool. And then these two, they reference artifacts that have been generated. Uh, when I compiled the Tether and USDC contracts that I created. Now let's import contract in big number from Ethers.js, the library that we'll be using to interact with the blockchain. Contract to create new contracts, big number. And these are from Ethers. And then we're going to define a simple helper function to convert way into ether so that we don't have to write ethers.utils.format ether 20 times. So we will call this to eth. And it takes way as an argument. And ethers.utils.format ether pass in way. And then this returns the ether equivalent of that. So basically, this just removes 18 decimal places or you could also say that it shifts the decimal point 18 places to the left. Now we get to our main function where we'll have most of our code, which isn't very much code actually. And I'll tell you high level what we're going to do. So firstly, we'll set up our provider and signer. Then we'll initialize the contracts that we'll be using. Then we'll get the state of the user's wallet and the position including the available fees to be collected. And we're also getting the wallet's information so that we can see how it increases, how token quantities increase after we collect uh, from our Uniswap liquidity position. Then we'll collect those fees 
and then again we'll check the state of the wallet and the state of the, and the state of the position to see how the values change and we should expect the token quantities in the wallet to increase and the fee is owed to us on the position to decrease because we'll have collected those so the first thing we do here is we set up the provider so const provider equals waffle dot provider and if you were doing this for a testnet or for a mainnet then you could use ethers js and pass in your infura url to create the provider i do that in pretty much most of my other videos now it's signer2 who owns the position um, and who will be collecting the fees so await ethers.get signers and if you were doing this for testnet or mainnet you could create your signer using ethers js's um, wallet class i've covered this in some other videos but let me know in the comments if you can't figure it out or you want some help and I can do a super quick, simple video because it's pretty straightforward. Now we initialize the four contracts that we'll need. So the first contract is the USDT contract and we just say new contract. We pass in the tether address, tether is USDT. And then from this artifacts object, we call dot USDT dot ABI because it's the ABI that we want from that. And then we pass in the provider. I'm going to copy and paste this and we'll modify it for USDC. And this should be USDC now and we'll need the provider again. Okay, two more contracts here. Actually, just one more contract here. And that is the non-fungible position manager. We're not actually going to be using the pool. I think I had that before and I just wanted to uh, simplify this. So let's do const non-fungible position manager equals new contract. And then we will pass in the position manager address and we will pass in let's copy this and modify it so instead of USDC we want the I non-fungible position manager and then the provider again okay we are done step two we're making a lot of progress very fast here now I want to set up some variables that will assign data to before and after collecting fees. So we want the USDT balance in Signer2's wallet and we can, well actually we won't get that value yet. We want USDC, we want the ETH balance in their wallet, we want something called pool data and we want I believe I removed pool data so we don't need that anymore we just need let position state and that will get us the state of our liquidity position on Uniswap which has the fields um, fees owed which will tell us how much we can collect now let's pull data from the user's wallet. So we can say USDT balance equals await USDT contract that we created above dot balance of and then signer2 dot address. We pass in signer2's address and then it returns the balance of USDT in their wallet. So we'll do the exact same thing with USDC. And then we want to get the balance of Ether, which is slightly different. We can just directly on 
signer2, we can say get balance. And then we want to pull position data. So we'll say position.state equals await is non fungible position manager contract dot connect connect to signer2 and say dot positions. So as I mentioned, I've created one liquidity position in this pool with signer2. And because there's only one and the liquidity position token IDs increment, the first one has an ID of one, the second one has an ID of two, and so on and so on. I know that one will return data about our position. Now we want to print the state of the wallet in position before collecting any of those fees. And it's a lot of console logs, so I'm just going to paste it here. And then we'll just quickly walk through it. So at time one, before we collect any fees, we have signer two, and we want to print the balances of USDT, USDC, and ETH. And then in our position, or from our position, we'll print the tick lower bounds, the tick upper bounds. Um, those aren't going to change, but it's just interesting to print. We're going to print uh, liquidity in the position, and then tokens owed zero and tokens owed one. And those are the tokens as fees that are owed to us that we've earned by providing this liquidity and having people use it to swap tokens and pay us those fees or pay Uniswap and then Uniswap, the Uniswap contract owes us those fees. Now we can collect our fees with the non-fungible position manager. I'm going to say await here and then I'll call doc connect. Again, we'll pass in signer2, and then I will call dot .collect. And this takes four fields. It takes the token ID, which I know is one. It takes the recipient, which is signer2.address. This is who you want to send the fees to. It takes amount, zero, max. I'll explain this in a second and amount one max. And these are the amount of the fees that we want to withdraw from the pool. Now this number can be any value over the fees that we've accrued. And it will just withdraw all the fees that are owed to us. So because of that, I'm gonna say big number from, put in a really big number here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And I will copy paste this. So it's not actually going to withdraw this much. The fees that we've accrued likely is a small fraction of this, but it will withdraw all the fees that are owed to us. Now I'm going to take this code from up here and I'm going to copy and paste it again so that when we run this script, we will get the wallet balances and the position values at time one and time two, before we collect and after, so that we can see the difference. Now let's give this script to run in our console. So to run this, we will do npx hardhat run dash dash network local host and then the, where this script is saved. So this is in a folder called scripts, and then it's called 09 underscore collect fees. And these are just some of the other scripts I use to set up my Uniswap environment locally. I have some other videos where I basically just give you all this code, so check those out uh, if you're interested in setting up Uniswap locally for yourself with all the contracts deployed and with the ability to have liquidity, do swaps, create pools, etc. But let's run this now. And a little typo here, the second one should be USDC. Okay, so we can see that at time one, before we collected fees, our USDT balance was 
996523. After was 996527. So our USDT balance increased. And it increased by 3.5, which was the amount of token zero owed to us from our fees. This is the amount of fees owed to us. And the USDC balance before we collected was 998522. And afterwards, it's 998524. And it, so it increased by two tokens, which is the amount of token one in our swap owed to us as fees. And you can see that those tokens owed for token zero and token one have decreased. They were 3.5 and 2.0, and now they are zero and zero. And that's all there is to it. It's very easy to collect your fees programmatically from a Uniswap pool for your liquidity position. Give this video a like and subscribe if you found it helpful. Leave your questions in the comments, and I'll see you next time.